And one morning, my boss was up here, and he said, uh, Sam, why don't you down taking the V12 test? And I sort of, well, well, stumble around, and I said, oh, you mean the officer training program, right? He said, yes. I said, well, sir, do you realize there are no black officers in the Navy today? And I personally don't think there's going to be any anytime soon. He just said, get your ass down and take the test. <laughs> and I went down and took the test, and I was one of three people to pass. And several months later, I got word that uh, I was being sent to college. And which college did I want to go to? And I thought of that one long and hard, and I just said, uh, no choice. I didn't know of any colleges except for black colleges that I could attend. And black colleges didn't have V-12 units. I thought about the University of Richmond. No. <laughs> then I said, well, they'll, they'll, they'll pick as good a school as I can. So all of a sudden my orders come back, and I go 100 miles away up to the University of Southern Cal. Yeah, you remember who played football at Southern Cal, the famous football player who killed his wife? Well, I got up there one morning, and I actually got up there one afternoon and uh, unloaded my stuff, and they assigned me a room with uh, six other white guys, as I recall, seven or something like that. And I spent the night there. Had two meals, I guess, there. And the next morning, someone came up and said, um, we're going to take you over to UCLA. He said, we think, we think you came to the wrong school. Okay. So I packed all my stuff, got in the car, a truck, really. They took me over to UCLA. And I went to UCLA, and nobody threw me off the campus, so I just stayed there. And what did you think? When they came to make that transfer? Well, I didn't think about it for a long, long time. And then finally it dawned on me one day that O.J. Simpson hadn't gone to USC at that time and become the hero that he was. And so they were getting rid of just another old so-and-so. But in any event, it uh, didn't bother me that much. I liked UCLA. UCLA was out in the country versus... USC, which was in town, and I like country schools. But in any event, I stayed there for uh, uh, three semesters, I believe. Now, how uh, you said that you were put into a, a <clears throat> kind of dormitory setting, I guess, with six other uh, yeah. young men who had passed the, the test, mm -hmm. and they were all white. Yeah. <clears throat> how did they respond to you? I mean, you were the only black. Yeah, but uh, we were all young guys, uh, 20, 21, 22. In fact, I was probably older than any of the rest of them. And they treated me just like a gentleman, and I treated them the same way. Didn't have any problem at all. In fact, I was shocked when I went back, when I went to UCLA, and they assigned me a room. They assigned me to a room in the basement next door to Peck's Bad Boy. <laughs> This guy was always in trouble doing something. And I got to say, now what the hell did I do to rate this? But anyway, we got along fine. He didn't bother me. I didn't bother him. One day he, uh, as I recall, turned the water on in my shower and left it going for 24 hours. And, of course, the place was flooded when I got back. So the next week I flooded his place. We got along fine. <laughs> I didn't have any problem. <clears throat> now, tell me about the, the, the kind of psychological transition that you, as a young black man, had to make from dealing with white folk in terms of the way you were raised to stay away from them, their trouble, their this, that, and the other mm. thing. Next thing, you're in this environment where you have some contact with yeah. them but in a definite 
lower position and the authority is really clear. And then you're in this sort of equal position where you're actually mm -hmm. living together. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't have any problem with that, that at all. Now, whether they had any problem with that, I don't know. Because nobody ever told me. I do know that every once in a while I hear some kind of a derogatory remark that would upset me for about five minutes, and I'd forget about that one and go on to the next thing. I, I didn't have any problems whatsoever. Did you Psychologically. Ever have, did you ever have any... <clears throat> uh, insecurities, momentary insecurities about competing on no. the same level? No? No. No. If they could do it, I could do it. Is that, that just that natural self-confidence? Or natural is that your mother sitting on your shoulders? Saying? Natural self-confidence. Plus, plus my father told me that, uh, son, if they can do it, you can do it. Yes, sir. No excuses. No excuses. So if you, your father wouldn't have exactly been sympathetic if you called him up and said, these white people are really mean. Yeah, right. No, he would not have been sympathetic. Yeah. So you just, just if they wipe, can do it? Wiped that one off and went on to the next thing. Yeah. So, so you were at UCLA for three semesters and then what? Hmm? You were at UCLA, you said, for three semesters. Yeah, then what? well, let's, let's see, was it three or two? Two semesters, I guess. You see, we went on a three-semester year in those days, and I got there something like November, and our semester went till about March, and then from March till June, and I got out in June. I had enough credit to go on to the next step, and the next step was Columbia University, which was the midshipman school, and I went on to Columbia University, and as I said, I'd been out there integrated so far as I was concerned for six months and I could I liked it all right and I just went on to the next step kept being integrated and suddenly one day I realized that uh, I'm going to graduate from this big institution and I did I forgot what date it was now I used to know 14 December 1944 I think that's when it was I graduated. Was was the graduation ceremony, was that the one that was held at St. John's Cathedral? Was that that's it? right. I understand that there were approximately a thousand graduates and you were the only black face. The only one in the school. That's right. You say that so calmly. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. You know, I mean, that's that's an amazing thing to experience. I mean, I can't imagine, you know, walking into this cathedral with a thousand young men mm -hmm. and you're the only black face. Did, did you feel proud? Did you feel strange? Did you feel, what did you feel? Well, I felt quite proud, really, because I'd accomplished something that I knew that that I, in fact, I didn't think anybody else had, had ever done it because nobody else had been under those same restraints. I did know that there were people who had gone to the, black people who had gone to the V-12 program. But whether any of them ever got to midshipman school, I just didn't, I didn't know that. And I knew a couple had busted out of V-12 school. But I, I felt pretty proud, but... My old dad could now stand up and say, that's my boy, <laughs> and feel proud, too. How did you do it? I mean, how, why, how did you manage to do it when other young black men, granted, few in number, but other young black men had tried and been busted out? I don't know. I really don't know why they busted out. Did you have some extraordinary self-control? No. You no, no. I don't think it was self-control or anything else. It was a will to do it. And I didn't plan to fail. 
I, I wouldn't doubt that a couple of those guys had planned to fail. Really? Why, why do you think that? I don't know. That they just didn't want this, the stress or the responsibility? or Could have been that. 